Warning, this video contains drinking and swear words. If you're a child or naughty language bothers you, this isn't the video you're looking for. Welcome to another episode of Comic Book Storytime where we take a single comic issue, this could be an origin story or just a story that I particularly liked, and we retell it. Today is going to be Action Comics issue number one, released in 1938, and it is the very first story featuring Superman, or with Superman in it in general. This comic book story time is going to be a tad bit different. This issue isn't as robust and maybe as zany as the other stories that I tell, and then because of that there's not as much commentary I can add to it. So instead, because I still really wanted to tell this story since I already did Batman's first issue and the movie is coming out this month, I decided instead we're going to turn this comic book story time into a game. And the rules of this game is anytime Superman does something illegal, I will take a shot. It's actually going to be half a shot, but we'll pretend like it's a shot. You are welcome to join me, of course, do it in moderation, and please be of the appropriate age and sound mind and have good reasoning and logic ability that you don't kill yourself. Let's begin. In the very first issue, we get Superman's origin story right off the bat. As a distant planet was destroyed by old age, a scientist placed his infant son within a hastily devised spaceship, launching it towards Earth. When the vehicle landed on Earth, a passing motorist, discovering the sleeping baby within, turned the child over to an orphanage. At the orphanage, the attendants were amazed by the baby's feats of strength. Then he was immediately taken by the government to be experimented on. No? Wow. When the orphanage kept his super feats a secret and he managed to get to adulthood without anyone ever knowing besides those people that saw him doing these things, all the time and never thought it was weird at all or maybe they should report it or bring him to a doctor or anything. Finally at adulthood, he could leap one-eighth of a mile and hurdle a 20-story building, raise tremendous weight, run faster than an express train, and nothing less than a bursting shell could penetrate his skin. Clark Kent realized that he must channel his strength into something that could benefit mankind. So he created Superman champion of the oppressed, dedicating his life to helping those in need. Clark Kent had come from a planet where the dominant race on that planet's physical structure was millions of years advanced than our own. They then give some examples of ants carrying something hundreds of times their weight and a grasshopper leaping incredible lengths, and it's kind of weird. And over the years, the reason why he has his abilities on Earth would change quite a bit. Next page, we jump right into action. Superman is racing through the night with a gagged and bound woman under his arm. We're off to a good start. He deposits her under a tree, telling her to make herself comfortable, because he doesn't have the time to attend to it. Sassy Superman is the best Superman. I'm not counting this as illegal because I am counting this as a citizen's arrest and I have not seen him use extreme violence yet, which would make what he's doing illegal. Superman runs to the governor's estate, knocks on the door, and tells the governor's startled servant that answers the door that it's a matter of life and death. But the butler tells Superman to come back in the morning, and he slams the door. Do you think Superman A respects the man's wishes? B knocks on the door and calmly explains why it's a life or death situation? C loses his shit and uses extreme violence? If you guess C, you know your Golden Age Superman. Superman chooses to knock down the door. All right, now we're talking. Property damage, illegal entry. Ugh, that's not good vodka. Whew. Superman says he'll see the governor now and asks the man if he's going to take him to the governor. The man doing his job says no, he won't. Which honestly is the right thing to do on this man's part. This total fucking psycho knocks on his door late at night wearing his fucking underwear on the outside of his pants and rips down a door and is demanding to see the governor. This guy is 100% in the right, right now. 
But being told no doesn't sit well with Golden Age Superman, who tells him, then I'll take you to him, while holding the man over his head and marching up the stairs. All right, we have Assault and Battery, that's one and two, and I'm actually going to count him grabbing the man and carrying him up overhead to a location that he doesn't want to go to as kidnapping. Let's do this shit. Ugh. Fuck you, Superman. Superman reaches the top of the stairs to a door where the man confirms behind the door is the governor's sleeping room. But the door is made of steel, and he'd like to see him knock the door down. Which Superman does. <sighs> Adding to his growing list of criminal property damage. Alright, criminal property damage once again. You go, Superman. After tearing down the door, Superman cheekily turns to the man and says, It was your idea. The governor then asks Superman what the meaning of all this is, and Superman finally explains that Evelyn Curry is going to be electrocuted in five minutes for a murder he has proof she didn't commit. But this poor fucking butler, like, is terrified that his client is about to be killed by this psycho roided out monster, and he produces a gun and tells Superman, Put your hands up in the air. Superman tells him to put the toy away, and the butler tells him not to take a step forward, or he'll shoot. Superman takes a step forward because he likes the taste of danger, and the man pulls the trigger. Of course, the bullet ricochets off Superman's tough skin, and he informs the butler it is no time for horseplay. The governor takes a look at the signed confession Superman has, and calls the penitentiary to pardon the woman. Just in the nick of time, Evelyn is saved. The butler remarks the man is gone, and the governor informs his manservant that he left a note. You'll find the real murderess bound and delivered on the lawn of your estate. Really, Superman? Really? You were just fucking there. You couldn't have said that? Also, you just fucking tore up his place. You couldn't stay maybe for like five more minutes and clean shit up. I know the other fucking adventures you went on during the Golden Age and even in the Silver Age, and you spent a lot of time dicking around doing stupid shit. You could have spent five minutes cleaning up that dude's home. You're, you're rude, Superman. You're rude. So far, this is your first story, and I'm not very impressed with you. I'm a little disappointed. The next morning, he leaves for the newspaper company he works for, which BT dubs was not the Daily Planet at this time. When he sees a man reading a paper and remarking the curry girl was proved innocent, taking the paper, Clark is relieved he wasn't mentioned. Yes, no one can know yet the devastation I'm going to wreck upon this world throughout the Golden Age. Soon you'll know my name. Soon. Miles away at the governor's private chambers, the governor tells his counsel about the man that clearly isn't human, and thank heaven he's apparently on the side of law and order. You know, the law and order that allows you to uh, break into a house, do tons of property damage, and kidnap people. All right, America. Next page, we see Clark has reached the Daily Star office to talk with the editor of the paper. The chief asks Clark if he's ever heard of Superman, and that he is his new assignment. Clark accepts, claiming that if he can't find out anything about this Superman, no one can. I know lying isn't illegal, but it's still hurtful, Superman. Just so you know, I'm not adding a point. I'm not taking a shot for it. Lying is hurtful. Clark then exits the building when a phone tip is received about a wife beating at 211 Court Avenue. He seems way too excited about the, the wife beating going on. I don't know, it, that's maybe just me. Instead of arriving as Clark Kent, he arrives dressed as Superman, telling the abusive husband to hold it. The man tells Superman to not get tough, and Superman, in so many words, says, You're not fighting a woman now, and I'm gonna beat your fucking ass. Alright, now Superman is getting a, an illegal ding here, and I want to be very upfront why. While citizen's arrest is okay, that, there's, that's not illegal, what is illegal is using excessive violence. And from everything we see in these panels, 
he uses excessive violence. So unfortunately, that makes what Superman is doing illegal. So we're going to have to give you a point, Superman. Mm -hmm. Gotta finish it up. Also, can you stop breaking the law, please? Thanks. After Superman slams him into a wall, <laughs> the abuser gets back up, brandishing a knife, but it breaks on Superman's skin. Superman informs him he's going to give him a lesson he'll never forget, but the man faints before Superman can deliciously torture him. Hearing the police sirens, Superman pulls on his street clothes over his uniform to become Clark Kent again. When an officer walks in on the scene demanding to know what he's doing there, Clark claims he arrived to the place like this and that it looks like Superman stopped in to pay a visit. That right there is obstruction of justice. BT dubs Superman. <sighs> Side of law and order and justice my ass. Hypocrite. Later, back at the office, Clark nervously asks Lois Lane for a date tonight. Lois agrees, deciding to give him a break for a change. That night, Clark dances with Lois while asking her why she always avoids him at the office. Lois, in her delicate, feminine way, sighs. Please, Clark. I've been scribbling sob stories all day long. Don't ask me to dish out another. Lois was an absolute monster back then. I, I want to actually make a video entitled Top 10 Most Horrendous Things Lois Lane Has Ever Done Pre-1980s. There's some really bad shit. Like, she has straight up drugged Clark Kent just to fuck him over. She's an absolute fucking beast. Just then, some men notice Lois and decide she's a nice looking woman and they wouldn't mind cutting in. One of the thugs, Butch, jumps in, and Clark meekly protests, and Lois asks if he's going to stand for this. Clark, knowing he must keep up his appearance as a weakling, asks Lois to give him a dance, and then they'll leave. Lois tells Clark to stay and dance with the man, but she's leaving. The thug tells Lois that she's going to dance with him and like it, and Lois slaps him. Clark thinks, Good for you, Lois, but shouts, Lois, don't! Butch demands Clark fight, but Clark claims he has no desire to do so. Lois ends up storming off, gets in a cab, remarking the reason she avoids Clark at the office is because he's a spineless, unbearable coward. Meh, I've been called worse things on first dates. You're fine, Clark, brush it off. Go oh, fuck up some people that parallel parked incorrectly. You'll be fine. However, back inside, the ruffians at the dinner decide they didn't like how Lois treated the man, and they head out in their vehicle to find Lois, which Superman observes. Butch catches up to Lois's taxi and forces it into a ditch. The thug pulls Lois out of the cab, and they force her into their car. As they speed away, they see a man standing in the road ahead. They laugh, and Butch says, watch me scare him out of his wits. But they soon realize the man in the road isn't moving. Instead, Superman leaps the car and then decides to chase it. The men are obviously freaked out as they try to outrace the man chasing them. One of the men says, it's the devil himself. <sighs> For Golden Age Superman, they're actually not too far off in that assessment. Superman easily catches up to the car, lifts it, and shakes the men out. He then destroys the car because property damage is Superman's fucking kink. Because fuck the justice system. The law? Superman is the law. So, ding property damage, you goddamn psycho of the golden age, Earth 2. Also, I love how the S on his chest, if you go through and you read the olden, golden age Superman's stories, his emblem on his chest will just randomly disappear throughout the issues. Just gone and then there again. 
Butch attempts to run away, but Superman isn't done with him. He grabs the man, asks if he minds, and that it'll only take a few seconds. Superman hangs Butch from a telephone wire by his pants. When Butch wants to be let down, Superman says he'll cut him loose. And the man says, don't. Assault and battery. And if you want to get technical with me, which I don't know why you would, because it's just a fucking comic book story time. But if you want to, and you like, you just want to get nitty whatever about it, yes, this would be a citizen's arrest. But this was extreme violence, which is not covered under citizen arrest. So I am giving him two pings. Jesus fucking fuck. We're not repeating this. This was like the worst idea ever. I'm like on page something. Also, just to throw this out here, I'm not 100% convinced he let that man live. Superman then approaches Lois, tells her she needn't be afraid of him, even though he just fucking tortured someone, and he deposits her on the outskirts of the city, advising her to not print what just happened in the paper. Look at her eyes. You know Superman whispered something to her, letting her know what he would fucking do to her if she printed that story. You know it's true. Don't even act like you have no idea what I'm talking about. You know what he whispered to her. You know. The next morning, Lois tries to tell the chief that she saw Superman, but the chief asks her if she's sure it wasn't pink elephants. Because, you know, the man the chief told people literally yesterday to report on suddenly is impossible to see. Clark later tries to apologize to Lois, but she blows him off. The chief then hands Clark an assignment, go to a small South American republic where a war is going on, and report on it. Kent instead boards a train to Washington, D.C. At the capital city, Clark attends Congress, and when it's dismissed, Clark snaps photos of a man talking to Senator Barrows. Clark brings the picture to the local newspaper asking who the man is. A man identifies himself as Alex Greer, a slick lobbyist with unknown interests backing him. Changing into a Superman uniform, Clark eavesdrops on the senator outside his home. <sighs> eavesdropping is technically illegal. Superman overhears the man talking to the same man earlier, Alex Greer. Alex asks if the senator is sure he'll succeed in pushing the bill through. The senator assures him it will go through before the full implications are realized, and America will be embroiled in a war. Alex lets him know he'll be financially taken care of, to which the senator responds, he's sure Alex will be taken care of as well. Superman agrees. You bet he will. I'm actually legitimately afraid for that man's life. Alex leaves the senator's home to be confronted by Superman, asking who is behind Alex and corrupting Senator Barrows. Alex refuses to talk, so Superman grabs his hand and says, we'll see whether you'll talk. Alex tells him to let go of his hand. Superman obliges him and grabs his foot instead. Once again, Assault, battery, kidnapping. Technically, everything Superman overheard, what they were doing, was not illegal. So you can't even say, oh, this is citizens, whatever, fucking arrest. It's not. Three pings, Superman. Three pings. You fucking out of control monster. Do you enjoy hurting me, Superman? Do you enjoy this? Happy Batman vs. Superman celebration. After this, Superman engages in what I can only describe as psychological torture. Superman races on a telephone wire with the man under his arm, yelling, they'll be electrocuted. Superman claims they won't unless they touch a telephone pole and that they are grounded. He almost lands at a pole exclaiming, oops, 
almost touched that pole. Intentionally inflicting emotional distress is actually illegal, whether you know that or not. Superman then takes him to the Capitol while the man yells, take me down, take me down. Superman lands on the building and wonders out loud, I wonder if we could jump all the way to that building, while the man shouts, no, don't. Illegal torture. This is actually legitimately, I hope I haven't used that word too much during this video. This is legitimately torture, which is illegal. He, he's torturing the man. There's no other way to describe what he is doing. He is torturing a human being. This is why Batman versus Superman, you see Batman being like, we gotta stop this guy because he read Golden Age Superman stories and he knows, he knows. Superman leaps and purposely misses and exclaims, miss, doggone it. And the story ends with Superman supposedly falling and a to be continued. So that was another issue of comic book story time and uh, probably the only time ever that I'm going to do shots during a video because I have now realized that that was a uh, terrible fucking idea. But if you were keeping counts, which I should be putting a counter in the... If I don't put a counter up in like one corner of this video, call me out on that shit. That's just lazy. That's just lazy. Roars, don't fucking be lazy. No one likes that. So, what we learned today is that Superman can break the, the law over 15 times in the space of 13 pages, which is shorter than a normal comic book. So, if you have a particular story or a character you want to have a comic book story about, or if you actually want me to go into origins or complete histories of a certain character, you can in the comments below. I am very well versed in both Marvel and DC. So if you have a interest for a certain character or storyline or being interested in certain things, you can always write it in the comments below. I am always super excited to talk about comics. It's just so much fun. Besides that, hit the like button because I am going to regret what I did in the morning and make sure you come back for Star Wars videos, comic videos, Game of Thrones stuff, and Walking Dead reviews. Also, just to throw this out here, I'm not 100% convinced he let that man live. That's not funny. Why do you laugh about things like that? really makes me wonder about you. Like, should you have a YouTube channel if dead children jokes and saying really terrible sexist things makes you laugh? Because it's not okay. It's not okay. You need to set an example for the generation. But you want to know what my demographic on this channel is over 23? So if you're over 23 and I still have to teach you that it's not okay to do certain things. I feel like you might be a lost cause at that point. So I personally am not going to take responsibility for your inability to... I actually forgot what we were talking about, so let's just continue on.